Hello everyone and thank you very much for watching. This is me, Mr. P, and this is another episode of the Proxmox Tutorials. One of my videos was to demonstrate how you can create your own file browser Docker container and that can be hosted on your Proxmox server. And one of the comments pointed out that if the VM restarts, the VM or actual Docker container of the file browser loses access to a user files. I did a bit of investigation, so I roughly know why it's happening. Not 100%, but I roughly can guess what's happening and I found a solution. solution might be a bit of a quick and dirty way to fix this it's a bit of a like a wonky workaround but it does work I tested for past two days constantly restarting the VM restarting the Proxmox host I will demonstrate first what the problem is and then I will show you how to get this corrected so first thing as you can see this is my Proxmox I just restarted it uh, it's been up for just over four minutes so it's just fresh update fresh run and I have all my containers and virtual machines going. So I have my Cloudflare, I have my TrueNAS, and I have my Cloud uh, YTM, which hosts the file browser container. So first thing, let's say everything you just restarted, gave another minute or two for everything to settle in, and you went straight away into the um, your file browser web GUI. You logged in with your user. So if I'm gonna log out, let's log back in. So I'm logged in with my user. And I get nothing and I get these errors at the bottom right hand corner saying 500 internal server error and it says something really went wrong and you can't access the stuff. So what's going on? That what I think might might happening is that the Docker container of the pro of the file browser starts just before the virtual machine of the file browser detects the Samba shares. So right now that's it. I can't do nothing in here. So what we're going to do, we're going to go right now manually inside the actually I'm going to go via SSH. So I'm logged in. I quickly check. Uh, let's clear the screen. I quickly check Docker PS, Docker space PS. I can see file browser is running. Everything's great. It's been up for three minutes. Everything is ticking. That's why I can access this. But where is my files? Because the Docker started just before the Samba was properly detected. That's why it's basically full, full apart. So what we need to do next manually is just write docker restart and give a name of this container in my case the name is file browser i will show you how you can name the container to make sure that this because the container name will have to be static for this workaround to work and i'll show you what you need to do so let's restart the docker container docker space restart space file browser gives me output file browser if it outputs the container name it means container restarted right now if i'm going to go back in this i'm going to refresh and i can see mr p stuff so great, I restarted the container after the old sample is detected, I do see my files. But obviously you don't want to do that every time you restart the Proxmox host or restart the virtual machine. You want this to happen all the time, like automatically. First thing we need to do is to make sure that the Docker container of the file browser will have the static name. To do that, and if you follow my video about the file browser, you probably added, a, um, you probably stored the Docker Compose file in the same location I did. In my case, it's inside CD slash MNT for mount slash diapine underscore user data, then Docker and then file browser. And inside this folder, I have I have a couple of files, or I have a folder and a file, Docker Compose. That's the one we need to edit first. To edit Docker Compose file, you need to type nano docker-compose.yml. And inside here, this line that I will show you now, this line will not exist if you follow my previous video. I just added that for this workaround. Basically, you add the line just be below the image colon, just add the line container underscore name colon file browser you can name this container anything you like you want you can name it files you can name it my files you can name it vault vault doesn't matter basically you need to put the name that will constantly will give the name to this container if this is not here docker sometimes will give a random names depending if you're recreating a container in the future but once that in so you just get the container underscore name everything added to say that you need to press ctrl x to close y to accept that you want to save the file and enter to confirm and now you need to type docker dash compose space up space dash d and then double dash force dash recreate this will recreate the docker container pulling the newest image all the files all your docker all the file browser container setting settings will be untacked because they stored inside the config folder so you just write this docker dash compose space up space dash d space dash dash force recreate press enter and it's just going to run quickly check if the image for file browser is most recent and do everything recreate 
So once that's recreated, we can go back in here, click refresh. I still see my stuff. Great. And if I will write right now docker space ps, I can see the container has been up for 14 seconds and I can see the file browser name at the end. It's just the, the way the, the formatting inside the terminal is, is a bit iffy, but it sells file browser at the end. Okay. So our docker container has a proper name. Now we can go and start creating this workaround. Diapi has a very very useful feature for this kind of thing, which is called diapy auto start. And what we're going to do, we're going to use diapy auto, auto start script to restart this container after the Samba is being detected and everything is working. And we will force the diapy system to double check uh, if the Samba is actually running. In the double check, it means you, the diapy will go inside the folder where Samba drives are mounted and just going to check if anything is inside. If you follow my video about file browser, you probably mounted the stuff in the same location as I did. And that is inside CD slash MNT slash diapi user data. And then I think it's called data. And inside I have two users, Jeff and Mr. P. And if I go inside Mr. P folder, I should see a folder called Mr. P stuff. So that's it. Just by going by a terminal into this location after Samba is connected to Diap iOS, you're forcing the system to double check if it's actually there because you're actually browsing the files which are located in the Samba share, which is, by the way, is inside the virtual true nice virtual machine. So that's here. So right now this Diapi restart thing to activate Diapi restart. We need to first make sure that it's on to do that. You just type Diapi dash auto start and press enter. And the last couple of last options, there is a bunch of stuff that I'm um, upcoming videos I will do about. But we are very interested inside the option 17 or option 17. So you enter, click enter on that, which says custom script foreground with auto login. I tried to do this with a background, no auto login, but it doesn't work because the user needs to be logged in. So you just select custom script foreground with auto login, press enter, and it will open the file. These files below the file browser fix, these lines will not exist. You're just going to have first three lines and then just exit zero. So uh, below the, these three lines, you can type whatever you want in here. I've just made a comment saying file browser fix, and I'm just going to comment this. And that's it. So what is doing this small three line script is gives free set 30 seconds timeout. So when virtual machine starts before anything is being done with this script is adds 30 seconds on top. So during these 30 seconds, the Diapi OS will go and connect the Samba shares and will start the Docker container. So Docker container, sorry, Docker container will start and then Samba shares will be detected. So that means that we need to restart this container just to make sure that it's definitely using the Samba shares that are connected. So during these 30 seconds, um, this is 30 seconds is, is, is the, um, uh, I believe you can get, go a bit lower, 20 seconds, but 30 seconds is fine. Restarting the Proxmox of a bunch of virtual machines and containers will take time. My main Proxmox server takes about five minutes to shut down and about four minutes, three and a half minutes to start up. So 30 seconds in this time span of five minutes is nothing. So 30 seconds, give 30 seconds. And there is a command called du space dash sh and then location where the folders located. So it goes inside the data and asterisk means scan everything. So what that does is that du is basically disk usage. So it checks disk usage and then dash sh is just basically gives a nice numbers instead of going and giving you output of each file located below di data. It just contains everything in the root folders and will show you how everything is happening. So you just tell the system, you go into this folder and check every, give me a storage unit or how much storage everything below data basically holds. So that means that the system will have to go inside the Jeff's folder and check how, how much storage that takes and then go in my own folder, Mr. P folder and check how much storage that takes. And after this is done, just go and Docker restart file browser. And this is why we make sure that a container has a static name because uh, this script otherwise will, you will have to change the file browser name to anything that Docker creates in the future. So I'm just telling, okay, after you, after 30 seconds timeout, just give me output of the storage, how much storage has been used with everything inside the data folder and then restart this. So I'm just going to go press X to close, Y to save, enter to confirm. And now it's asking me which user you want automatically log into a system before the script runs. 
and I want to run this in the root. So I just make sure that root is selected and press enter and exit. And that is it. So right now we're going to go back inside a port inside a proxmox uh, GUI. And this is the actual VM right now in here. So what we're going to do, we're just going to make sure that it's actually active. Yes, I can control this. So let's clear this line and just going to write reboot. So I'm, I'm instructing the virtual machine to basically reboot itself. So virtual machine is reboots and we're going to see what's going to happen with this script. So Proxmox restarts this virtual machine. The Diapi OS starts starting Diapi auto starts custom script. So right now 30 seconds is ticking. So while this is happening, meanwhile, the Docker is being started and a Samba, Samba share is being connected. So this is, this is in progress for 30 seconds. And here we go, script finished. So we can go over this. System started, 30 seconds timeout happened. And then after 30 seconds, the DU space SH went and gave me an output for Jeff's folder, which is, takes only like empty. And then Mr. P folder is 1.2 megabytes. After that, the file browser restarted and that's it. If I go to the file browser interface and press refresh, I see my Mr. P stuff. I tried to get this fixed with numerous things. I can actually demonstrate a couple of for you. So if I go back inside the virtual machine, first thing I try to do is initiate the cron task on reboot to run the script, which is called restart.sh. And I can give you a quick show what that is about. And it was give her two minutes and then navigate to this folder, do all the things, uh, make sure that the folder is detected, etc. That was working if the user is logged in. For non-user login, I just decided not to go this way, not trying to troubleshoot how to make this actually happen. One thing I tried, um, oh, another thing I tried is called system, is called services timeout. So system CTL edit Docker dot services and I try to add here as you can see below services says start uh, delay the docker start point for 30, 60 seconds so about a minute and then make sure that this folder specifically my folder is mounted and that is great again works but user needs to be logged in and even sometimes when the user is logged in it wasn't working so one workaround that it actually works and is I, like I said, I'm all, uh, tested for over two days. If you have a problem with the file browser Docker container that just can't detect your Samba shares after watching my video, just you think what's going on. I don't want to really manually restart the, the Docker container for file browser. This is a workaround. Yes, I know it's a bit iffy. It's a bit, it's a bit wild workaround, but it does work and it works every single time when I restart not only virtual machine, but I restart Proxmox host because some of these some of these um, fixes that I tried, other fixes that I tried to get this working only works when VM restarts, but not when the Proxmox restarts. So anyway, this is how everything needs to be done. The free lines commands that you need to add inside the Diapi auto start script, you will find in the description below next to the like button. And thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.